uh, thank you all for, uh, for being here this early. What I'd like to do is start with a, a story, a story of how uh, data actually affects uh, everything you do in a firm, but also how it affects your actual customers, and it's a personal story. So this is about me first coming into the US, I think about two years ago. One of the most important things you have to do nowadays, if you want to be a real citizen, is you have to have a bank account. Right? So what do you do? You go into a bank and you open an account. For some reason, and our legacy is everywhere, my bank is in Times Square, which is well, a fun place to go to, unless you're a tourist or something. So uh, I go into the bank multiple times just to open a bank account. And as you all know, what you do when you open a bank account, you have to give some kind of evidence of who you are and evidence of, of where you live, right? So you have to provide that information to the bank. They give me a bank account, and a little bit later, I'm trying to get a credit card, because in the US, that's, what's, that's what makes you a real citizen, right? You gotta have at least one credit card. Turns out, for me to get the credit card, I have to hustle all the way back to Times Square, fun times, right? And so I'm at the, I'm at the bank, and uh, they tell me, just wait now, right? Wait, they will call you. So I'm at the bank, and they say that they will call me. And they have, effectively, they do call me. They do call me, I have to answer questions to the guy on the phone about opening a credit card account. And then uh, they ask me for the exact same information. Right? They ask me, for who I am and whether I can deliver proof of evidence. And I just told him, well, if I have to give you the same information once again, if I have to come into this office once again, why don't I not take a credit card? Right, so just to show you the effect of, of data um, on the consumer, right? You as a customer and how the firm works with your data. What, an, what, what, what kind of an effect it can have. And if you look at it, and I was actually <clears throat> supposed to take my phone, but then they said I couldn't, right? So if you look at this device, right, all the applications that are on this, you know, this is, this is all I need. I don't need to go into uh, uh, an office. I can do my bank from this. I can do investments, portfolios, all through this device. And that's because the mobile services and the web services are being driven by data through this device. So when I, as a vendor, when we as a vendor go into our customers, and we look at the way that our customers internally deal with technology, deal with, with data, the way they are professional about it, I can immediately see the effects of that, right? Internal to their organization, but also to their customers. And as a consumer, looking from the outside into the firm, you know, if, like I said earlier, if you feel not confident with them managing your basic information, your basic evidence, how can you feel confident with more critical data, right? With your future, with investments that you're making. So data has far-reaching effects. The good news, of, of course, is that nowadays it doesn't seem to be a four-letter word anymore, right? It's not something that uh, the alchemists down in the dungeon are doing. Right? It's, not, it's not about the weird box in which the data sits. Data has actually become uh, very important uh, on the strategy pages of the senior executives and the CEO. Uh, every a senior executive worth their salt nowadays has data in their strategy. And how to organize around data. I would say it's even the last, the la almost the last business process that's currently still stuck in the world of Excel is the last frontier of actually organizing your business, organizing your data. And that's, that's what my uh, speech is about today. Oh, there you go. So when you look at many of the organizations, I was just talking, talking about this yesterday, right? Uh, a lot of organizations nowadays handle data governance, have created a DMO, a chief data office, what have you, have created that as an aspirin, right? As an, as an answer to a regulatory requirement, to a looming regulatory deadline that's up tomorrow. And it helps, right? It, it sort of takes the pain away. But when you really look at it, and I think most of you actually do understand this, when you really look at it, a good data practice, right? Data governance 
is not an as it's not just an aspirin. It's actually a vitamin. If you take this vitamin, if you do that exercise, you actually get healthier, you get better, you get stronger. It's not just a regulatory response. It becomes a competitive differentiator if you manage to do it well. And I, or we at Colibra, we want to push this really very far. For us, it's not about um, just you know, first taking the aspirin, then turning it into, into the vitamin. It's about giving that vitamin to everyone in your organization. You know, data isn't just about business users producing and consuming the, the data. It's about how do you actually turn all those people in your organization into an active and engaged data citizen, a participant. Right? Because they actually create the data, they make the data, they make it trustworthy, they add value from it, they derive value from it. And you know, it's, a lot of people try to establish stewardship organizations nowadays by you know, appointing data stewards, we'll get back to that. But you know, I've, I've tried that too, you know, making somebody else exercise for me. It didn't work, right? So for me to be healthy, for your organization to be healthy, the stewards are one thing, right? They are an enabler on the road to make everybody a data citizen in your organization. That's the objective you want to reach. That's the business as usual you want to reach. That's the situation where you are starting here. Oh, I'm a business user and I have an application form to fill in. And there's this one field. Oh, I don't know what the field means. I always put X, 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 X. I don't know what, I don't use it anyways, you know. But you know, I gotta fill something in. So I fill X, 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 X. And then it, you, this, you turn this around into a situation where every person, rather than just putting the X, 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 is actually asking themselves, well, wait a moment. Why am I putting X, X, X here? What does this even mean? What is the effect of me doing this? What is the effect of me creating that data in this way? See, it's a, you go from here to there. You go from the regular business user to the active and engaged data citizen. Now, some, some theory, right? Um, I know the slide has a lot of words on it, and they're very small. I tried it out at the back. But don't worry about reading the slide, right? You can get a copy of the slides. But this is the positioning of data governance. So, you know, to add to the question, how do you do all of this? This is how it should be looked at. The bottom part is what everybody, what all organizations have been doing for a long time, right? Your classic data management operations. You store data, you move data, you clean data, you consolidate data, you draw reports from it, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But each of these activities, if you look at the control and enablement process around it, it's typically all duct taped together with spreadsheets and meetings and emails, right? So what you need is the business platform for change on top of that, which is governance, which is an operating model driven. How are you organized, in other words? Roles, responsibilities, processes, etc. It's an operating model, operating model driven capability that you provide to your data citizens, that you use to turn your business users into data citizens. Because that's, in the end, what they want to achieve, right? An easy function for them to do all the things which are in the very small letters at the top. And this provides you with that control and enablement layer that wraps around all of your data management activities. Now, it's easy for me to say that, and, and I know it's difficult for you to do this. I'm sure if I do a poll that there's more than one of you who started a data governance initiative at one point in time, who maybe restarted it and restarted it again, right? Maybe renaming it because people don't, didn't want it to be governance anymore. I'm sure that there's an, a number among you have, who have been assigned the lead data governance person or the chief data officer. Like, uh, you know, let me give you this gift, but you're not quite sure what's in the box. I'm sure that many of you have been asked, oh, can you be a data steward? Here's a list of responsibilities that it comes with. And by the way, 
I still have a day job. Yeah, but here's more work, right? I'm sure that many of you have set up these exciting data governance council meetings only to see them fizzle out with nobody showing up three months later. So it is hard work. <clears throat> it is hard work because what you're trying to do is bring a change into your organization. And the only way to successfully bring that change is actually quite simple, right? It's a very two-step recommendation I'm going to give you here. Um, and I don't want to make it a debate whether data governance is a project or it's a program. For me, it's a journey whereby you start from nothing, right? You have a problem situation, you have a compelling event, where you start taking the aspirin, you turn it into vitamin, and the end goal of this journey is business as usual, right? The data citizen who wonders why he or she is always putting XXX in that field. That's the business as usual. When people are no longer talking about data stewards, but they're just saying, oh, but you know, this is how we've always done data. This is how we've always done it. So the way to do that is to first prove out the value, right? Whether you do that to an approach with critical data elements or issue management. Uh, we've, we've seen customers who start from a very weird angle, right? Through data sharing agreements, for example, which is a little bit unusual. But it doesn't matter. What matters is that you actually do it and you show value. So you prove that you're not taking up people's time, you're adding value to their work. And once you've done that, the second thing you gotta do is just expand your efforts. Let's say you're in a DMO or an EDM or what have you function. Um, you're gonna be looking at all your other departments, all your other lines of businesses, all your other data projects, all your other working groups, what have you, and you're gonna ask them, <clears throat> well, what do you need? What do you need? What is your problem? What is blocking you on your data initiative today? And then you're gonna solve that problem for them, right? You're gonna enable them to solve that problem with a stewardship capability that they actually need to get their job done. So it's very simple. You prove value first, quickly, right? Three months in, and then you just repeat the same thing to all the other stakeholders until you've achieved that business as usual. And that's my prediction, right? That's my prediction for today. It's my prediction for the next years. The organizations that actually manage to do this in a systematic way in their organization that manage to make governance that business as usual to embed that stewardship into the core fabric of their organization, those are the organizations that, are, that will actually win out in this new quote unquote age of data, right? Where your traditional competitors and your non-traditional competitors, they're doing this, right? They're all doing this. Everybody's trying to get this done. Everybody's trying to cross that chasm of the adoption. And the only way to do that is by providing your organization with a business platform to be able to achieve that change. Now, if I can phrase this in other words, think about the software firms you buy from. Right? Think about the supermarkets you go to. Why do you go to these? Why do you buy from them? You go to them because they offer a certain kind of quality. You don't go to the same restaurant if they don't offer you good food, right? You don't go to the same software vendor if they don't offer you good software. Well, the same thing is true with your firm. You know, your customers will not go to you as a firm if you don't offer them good data or a good way of actually handling that data. By being professional in your organization, you will actually get that competitive differentiator.